So we all depend on the oceans. Half of us get protein from the oceans, but even if you don't like fish, the oceans are important to the quality of your life because they absorb 30% of the carbon dioxide that we emit and thus help stabilize a changing climate. They also produce 50% of the oxygen we breathe. Yet for all of human history, our relationship with the oceans has been defined by two facts. One is that they are mysterious, that we don't and can't know very much about them. It's said that we know less about the sea floor than we know about the surface of the moon. And the second fact has been that that's okay because the oceans are vast and inexhaustible and stable. And yet we now know that that second fact is simply not true. The oceans are changing at a pace we've never seen before. Climate change is the biggest driver of that. We're just coming out of two years of coral bleaching, the largest bleaching event ever, affecting 70% of the world's reefs. We also are seeing fisheries shift. Fisheries move towards the poles. Countries have depended on those fisheries for centuries, suddenly have no fish to catch. And it's important to recognize that that changing climate is not the only pressure on the oceans. We are going after fish with nets that could catch 747s. We are polluting the coastal environment in a way that makes it very hard for fish to breathe. And we are putting so much plastic in the oceans that there will soon be more plastic than fish. And what's critical here is that we often think of those threats individually, one at a time, when in fact there's every reason to think that they interact. And that if we understand those interactions, we'll have a much better picture of the risk that healthy ecosystems may tip into degraded deserts. And that's the goal of the research that we're now undertaking. We've pulled together a collaboration between Stanford, Oxford University, the Ocean Conservancy, which is a leading NGO, and the Forum to try to bring the power of the fourth industrial revolution to bear on this challenge. Understanding the real risks we face from the interaction of stressors on the ocean and, and identify the actions that can be taken to meet that challenge. That project starts with a model called OSIRIS, don't ask me what it stands for, uh, which attempts to begin to capture the interaction among different groups of species in the oceans, shown in green on this slide, and the interaction among the several stressors or drivers on those systems. It's not a model that will predict exactly what happens, but it's a model that can tell us what matters. And a first run, very crude run, gives you some indication. If you assume all the stressors are additive, you see over 50 years a gradual linear decline in different species groups. If, in fact, the stressors are synergistic, you see chaos. And many species simply crash out. And that's the challenge, that's the picture we're trying to illuminate. Now, the trick is to take that modeling, apply it to a particular system like, say, Palau or the Beaufort Sea in the Arctic, and begin to say, what are the real areas of risk here? What's the heat map that'll guide investigation with the data that we can pull together to understand what's really going on? And so in this project, we'll pick a couple of those places and tap into the new data streams that are now becoming available. So ocean-going drones on the surface and underwater can cruise the ocean for months at a time. They're being used already in defense and in oil exploration, but their ambition is a digital ocean, assaying chemistry, assaying DNA, assaying fish counts. At the same time, we have satellites in a more amazing array than we've ever seen before, satellites with different kinds of capabilities that can measure ocean temperature, that can take daily pictures that help us measure productivity and the health of coral reefs, that can even take high-resolution pictures that identify specific ships. One example of the application of this is Global Fishing Watch put together by Google. It tracks every large fishing boat in the entire ocean every day and it can track individual boats. So this blue line is the trip of one individual fishing boat across the Pacific to the island nation of Kiribati into that red square, which is a marine protected area, and then fishing. And Google Fishing Watch allows us to catch those people. A second application is MFish. MFish puts smartphones in the hands of small community fishermen in Indonesia. It streams data they need on weather, fish stocks, and market prices, but it also provides a platform for collecting data on where they fish and what they catch that guides management of the fishery. And you can imagine as we know more about what data is important, that technology can be used to collect that data from fishermen on the water and also stream guidance to them to manage their fishing activity more effectively. So those are the kinds of possibilities we're trying to develop. We're facing an era in which the oceans will be in upheaval, and we need all the tools we can muster to understand what's going on and enable the man successful management of that resource. And the goal of this project is to put those tools in the hands of ocean managers, whether they are fishermen or communities or governments, and allow us to adapt to an era of climate change. Thank you very much.